do is I like to just kind of preset everything up. You have a nice uh, flat clamp here. What I like to do is I like to put that on the chest tube first. Because sometimes you get a lot of blood, you put that chest tube in, blood will shoot, kind of shoot out, you know, spray everybody. And you kind of lose some cool points there. So you go ahead and get kind of all your stuff set up. And when the suture, you can go ahead and introduce uh, that onto your sterile field. Um, we just happen to have a curved uh, silk here. I'll show you. There are a couple different techniques, a Roman sandal, um, purse string, and all that. If you have access to it, this, this makes a really nice um, temporary uh, tube securing device. This is a towel clamp. I'll show you kind of how that works. You want to go ahead and have a scalpel. You want to have a large set of curved forceps and then just uh, some scissors as well. Um, the first chest tube I ever did, I actually screwed it up a little bit. I made a tiny little incision um, and then I, it was a big old strong healthy guy. It was a trauma and I ended up having to uh, go ahead and cut it down a little bit. So, you know, so definitely make a good incision the first time. And then you just want a nice set of uh, flat uh, needle driving forceps when you make your suture. Get so that ready, drape them up, and then you go ahead, scrub them up. You put on sterile gloves when you do this. You want to stay as sterile as possible. Um, and again, we talk about the, the first, the two inches around, um, two inches in. This is considered dirty. It's considered clean. If my hands go below my waist, what have I done? Dirty. Dirty. Yeah. You know. So again, you want good technique. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't care. It's down dirty trauma." Come on, come on. That's a bad excuse. There's no excuse for that because this is not an emergency, right? This is not necessarily an emergency procedure. Okay. So I found my rib. I've infiltrated. I've set up. What do I want to do next? Okay. So I've done all that. Make your incision. Okay, I'm going to make my incision. Where, where, where am I going to make my incision? Yeah, I'm going to make my incision on top of the rib. Now, some people might do this differently, and this is just how I do it. And there are other techniques, and I'm definitely not going to say that they're wrong by any means. Um, you know, I've only actually done about half a dozen chest tubes on living people, so I'm, I'm certainly not the definitive resource when it comes to chest tubes. I'm going to have my landmarks. I've got my equipment ready. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that initial incision. Now it's kind of difficult because you don't really have subcutaneous tissue on this, so um, there's a little bit of pretending. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my incision. And I want to make it big enough to work with, right on top of the rib. Then what am I going to do? Watch the sharp. Stick your killings in there. Okay. Spread and it. There's big ones or there's little ones? Or? No, you want the curve. Yeah. Now how am I going to hold these? Do you guys like, want to hold them out like this, like this way out here? Yeah. I want to have good control, and I want to, want to use physics to help me out. So, and I, I see a lot of people will hold them way out like this. You want to go ahead and hold closer in. You can get a little more pressure, and you have a lot more control. You're going to be talking to your patients because now your patient is going to be feeling lots of pressure. I don't care how much you've anesthetized this, they're going to have pressure. That's... The head's over there, right? Right, head's up here. Sorry about that. Yeah. Head's here, feet's here, toward my head. And then as I go in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect, or what we call blunt dissection of the tissue in, and I'm going to go over the top of the rib, avoiding the bottom of the rib on top of that. Blunt dissect, down, down, down. And I'm going to get a little bit of resistance there. That's the pleura. And then what I'm going to do is Okay, we're going to feel a lot of pressure and a lot of pain here. I apologize. You're going to pop through the pleura and you'll feel it pop. Which is the pop that you guys heard me want. Yeah, about five to ten seconds ago. You'll feel a big pop there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bluntly dissect that open. Make myself a, you know, a good hole to work with. Your patient's going to be very uncomfortable during all of this. And then uh, I noticed in the, the slide, they kind of just had the hole like that. Once you put something in there, you, it's just like a crike. You never take it out because that thing can seal back up. You'll never find it. So always keep something in there. And then when they talked about, you know, after you've done, you know, you've tunneled and you've made your hole, um, again, there's a little debate on do I stick my finger in there, don't I? I actually do. That's just me. I do. I want to make sure. So I'll pull this out as long as I have something in here. Can everybody see? 
I'm going to take my finger and then I'm going to feel, and what I should feel is I should feel this smooth pleura. And I really shouldn't feel anything in here. You know, if there is a lung up against there, obviously if there's a, you know, some air in there, you won't feel much of a lung, but you may feel a little bit of tissue. But if I feel something, if I'm on the right side, and I feel something kind of firm, and I can kind of push it away, and it feels, it feels a little firm and, and smooth, what do you think that is? Liver. That's a liver, yeah. So, bad news there. And I go ahead and I just kind of feel around, and if there are any adhesions, it'll feel kind of like a, um, a tendril of, um, like a tendril of tissue, and you just kind of break it up, kind of peel away, and make sure that your path is clear. Okay, so once I've done that, will I take my finger out? No. No. So I go ahead and have my chest tube and hold that. Take my chest tube. There are a couple of ways I can insert the chest tube. I can, uh, they usually use uh, plastic chest tube holders or guides. You can also just use your, uh, your clamp here as a guide to go in. Or you can just put it straight in. It just depends on the situation. Go again. Go in. Go ahead and insert it. Make sure that all my holes are in the chest and I have my chest tube in. We go ahead and look at securing it. A real quick down and dirty way of securing. Um, I, I, you've seen this before is to use your towel clamp. It actually works reasonably well, believe it or not. But if you happen to use this, you've got to let people know that you're using a clamp because you'll have some very unhappy trauma surgeons. So you just go around the skin and clamp it in place. And you can see it works reasonably well. Go ahead and tape it up. You put an occlusive dressing. Do I use petroladium gauze? Do I not use petroladium gauze? You know, there's that whole argument. You just want a good bulky dressing over there to secure it. Um, if you do get a lot of um, a leakage around the site, you, you, know, you might go ahead and go with occlusive dressing. Uh, go ahead and put this, hook this up to a pleurivac. We'll bring a pleurivac in a little later on, uh, I think next week. Um, and we'll actually show you. You guys have seen those before, worked with them a little bit. Yeah. The ones that we fly with are really nice because it's a dry seal and it can maintain up to 20 centimeters of, uh, of underwater pressure. Is it the auto transfusion thing? Actually, we didn't have the auto transfusion yeah. ones, but I have one. Okay. Dressing, and then you want to mark. Go ahead and mark it so people know, hey, I use a towel clamp. And we'll talk about the suture when I open this stuff up first. This is called a towel clamp. Towel? Towel. Like like a, towel like yeah. a, uh, it's an actual towel, towel. Yeah, towel clamp for when I use the, the sterile. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what they use in surgery gotcha. to hold the towels in. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's the basic procedure uh, for inserting the chest tube.